Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. We are going to talk about Microsoft's new invoice capture solution. They have a vision. It's a beautiful vision and I'm going to show you how it works with ND365 and then integrate that <clears throat> with my experience um, through my, my accounting manager roles, through working with accounting teams and just seeing the struggles with AP automation within D365. Microsoft really heard those, um, those requests and has put out a solution that is phenomenal. Um, you know, Microsoft, they're always improving. improving. I remember our, when I was introduced to D365 back in 2018, when you'd enter a journal entry, the system, every time you go to a new line, the system would take a few seconds to process that first line before it would move on to the second line. And it was very frustrating because you couldn't really go through efficiently like uh, most accounting teams do. Microsoft heard that, and I don't know if you notice now, there's, that issue is no longer there. So Microsoft heard um, the need for AP automation and have created a embedded solution or a, a solution that you can embed within D365 using Power Apps. And uh, it is beautiful, I'm gonna share it with you now. Okay, let's jump in. So the first thing I wanna show to you is the actual uh, Power App. And so this is the Invoice Capture Power App and it does um, utilize Power Automate. And how does it utilize Power Automate? So when the um, setup, so I'm just gonna, gonna, going to go here to system, set up system. Microsoft has made this very simple to set up. So in my experience, I have um, worked with a lot of AP solutions who it takes a, a, quite a while to set up the system. Out of the box, Microsoft has put some default uh, configurations in here that you can start utilizing this system very, very efficiently, very fast. So if we go into um, over here under mapping rules, well, actually let's come back to mapping rules. Let's go into manage channels. So here's the um, areas that we're gonna talk about. So we're gonna manage channels. This is where we would set up our email to um, use, if we click on this email. Here is where Power Automate is set up. So there's a flow embedded in this Power App that says anytime an email comes to this email box, we want you to receive it into invoice capture. And the same you can do for SharePoint, but we can also import these manually. Uh, I believe it was 20 at a time. So we'll talk about that in a second. Again, this default Microsoft brought in so that you can start uploading invoices day one. The next thing we'll talk about is file filters Microsoft brought in a default, start day one, but you can separate some out for, for what is this for? So if you're getting um, invoices to your uh, email box from your vendors, and sometimes they send uh, W9s to that same box and you don't wanna get those and you tell all of your vendors that every time you send an invoice, make sure that the invoice has INV in it, so that way you're only getting your invoices. It's an option, don't have to use utilize that. The next thing is the configuration groups. So we'll go there really quickly. So what I've done here is I did create three configuration groups. Microsoft gives you one out of the box, ready to go. And basically this is where you define what's mandatory on your invoice and where the error, code or error exceptions come in. This is where you define. So you see PO invoice, header invoice, cost invoice. And then right now, any invoice that comes in, you can choose which one. Do I want a PO invoice, a header only invoice, or cost invoice? What's the difference between these three? Three, uh, PO invoice is exactly that. It's a PO driven invoice. Header only is also a PO driven invoice. For example, if you have a PO created for um, itemized supplies and you itemize the supplies or the you as the, the customer or the, um, the person who creates the purchase order, <laughs> you, you um, in inventory your supplies, but your vendor does not. 
and they um, are going to send you an invoice and it's just going to say supplies and they're a trusted vendor so you trust them um, you put they send you an invoice for supplies for $500, you inventory three different line items for $500. As long as the totals match and the vendors match and the POs match, then the system um, can automatically process that and create those lines for you in the pending vendor invoice. I'll show you that in the upcoming examples. And then the cost invoice is just that's like a utility expense or um, items like maybe freight that doesn't have a purchase order with it. They're all going to be processed through pending vendor invoice though. Um, so I created one for each one, PO invoices only, PO header totals only, and cost invoice. The reason why I did that is because when we go into our legal entities, I'm sorry, our vendors, you'll see in a second. So here is where we manage our legal entities and we just sync which legal entities we wanna use invoice capture for. And here is where we'll also sync our vendors to D365. It is very easy to sync your vendors. You just come up here, sync all, and it syncs all of them. Okay, but on the vendors, notice how we're only going to talk about US01. So notice I only have, um, I have UK in here as well, but I'm only, I only pulled in the US um, vendors. And see how I say anytime a Acme Office Supplies invoice comes in, it has to have a PO. And it's PO invoices only. This land packaging supplies is header totals only. Now you don't have to do this. You can leave it at the default and make this decision when they come in to D365 or when they come into the invoice capture. I'll show you that too in the demo. Um, okay, so next is mapping rules. Mapping rules is just that. You're just mapping, so if you have a legal entity and it's called, so you can see here with Contoso, um, we say anytime the vendor invoice says Contoso USA, the legal entity is US01. So you can uh, add as many of these mapping rules as you'd like. Um, vendor accounts, same thing here. You can see this UK vendor says anytime the vendor name says Crown Technical, then um, this is the vendor account number. So. We can, we can do that as well as items. So if you have vendors who have different item numbers than what we have in our system, it's a great way to map those out. And then expense types as well. So you can see anytime that the expense type um, name contains electric, we want the uh, project, I'm sorry, procurement category to be gas and electric. Okay, so this is just the setup very easy setup. As a matter of fact, you could start utilizing this AP automation right out of the box and then continue as you get exceptions to update your mapping roles and so and, and maybe you're uh, managing your vendors to be a specific type of invoice if you'd like. Um, but remember you have this AI builder in. And how that works, it's pretty nice, um, is that the first time the invoice comes in and you are updating manually the exceptions, the system remembers those, similar to what, what it does already in D365, where it remembers maybe the last time that you were at, um, or you, you filtered on a certain column and it said uh, contains, and it remembered contains the next time, very similar to that. Okay, so, now, these are really the three er areas a user will utilize in invoice capture, an AP user. Um, I have embedded this in D365 very easily. So let's go into D365 in Vendor Invoice Automation Workspace. You can see here I have embedded invoice capture and received files, which is exactly these captured invoice and received files. So when an invoice comes in, it will first be here and receive files for a matter of seconds. And then as the OCR reader and the AI builder reads the um, invoice file, it moves it into invoice capture. If there's no errors or exceptions, it immediately moves it into pending vendor invoice here. If once it's in pending vendor invoice, the automation will run or process automation is what Microsoft calls it. That process automation will match receipts, will update match status, 
will uh, submit to workflow. If your workflow is set up like mine is right now, that says if it's a if it has a purchase order on it, then go ahead and approve it. Why is that? Because if it's a purchase order and it's it's gone into pending vendor invoices, then it's already been through the approval process. There's no additional approval needed. So, and if it's not, then it it'll stop. Um, and now that I think about it, I need to update that workflow because we're going to have some examples moving forward without purchase orders. And then we're going to need to route those somewhere as well. But for right now, for the next demo that you'll see, it is going to be all, everything matches what happens in that process. So let me show you really quickly what happens when it comes into pending vendor invoice. We're going to go into the system administration now as a user you'll never see this um, and you're going to go here to process automations now there are some business i'm sorry background processes and i'm going to pull up the ones sorry for a second here we go these are the ones that we use. All behind the scenes. Now, Microsoft won't allow these to be less than an hour. They have to be a minimum of one hour. You can't do minutes here. Um, so every hour, this automation will run. And the first thing it'll do is it'll try to match product receipts. Once it's matched product receipts, um, it'll also pull in anything to um, that is automating the, so this is actually running the um, automation workflow. So this runs first. We have this set for every 10 minutes, matching product receipts. And then um, this is the update match status. That happens every 10 minutes. And then we're going to submit to the workflow automatically happens once every hour. That's how it works. Now, what Microsoft Vision is, is that once it goes through this automations, it's posted because in the workflow I have, if it's been approved, automatically post it. So a user would never see, if it matches, would, uh, would never see these invoices. It'll post and then it'll even run the, an automation when it gets to the vendor payment process because we're going to utilize the process automations for our vendor payments as well. And in the, the user would need to do a review process and I would tip, typically recommend that, right? Once you do that process op automations, you want a user to review the payments that you're fixing to make that that automation has selected. Once that's done, um, then you post, you process for payment and that's it. So that's Microsoft's vision. What we're gonna talk about in the upcoming videos is happy paths and not so happy paths. So what happens when everything matches and what happens when certain things don't match, when there's no PO, when the vendor name doesn't match the PO, when the, or the vendor invoice doesn't match the vendor invoice name on the purchase order. What happens when we get an electric bill? What does that look like? Um, what if what if it needs to go back to a buyer or a purchaser to, um, to look at because the, the lines don't match? What are we gonna do in that situation? So. All of those are coming in the next few videos. This is going to be your introduction. I'm excited to bring it to you and we'll see you soon.